Wake up, gamers, because you're in the big think dimension, the first gaming podcast to self-isolate and sound good. Featuring KZ Excellent. I think video game good. Dan and Bob Video Game. You see that mountain? You can self-isolate on that mountain, Bob. Oh, thank God. And Mr. Feel. No. Here on Gigabits. Bob. What's up? We forgot to eat our off the grid waffles. Oh yeah, we before did this episode of Big Thick Dimension. What? I bought a <laughs> box of high protein waffles, literally called off the grid waffles. <laughs> this is bad, everyone. This is uh, good. Man, we're getting we're getting This ain't good. <laughs> I thought we were just gonna talk about spam. I'm gonna get shredded while eating waffles with tons of syrup on them. That's gonna work out for me, goddammit. Feel? This is only like, this is the second, I think the third episode in which we have the self, the, the self isolate intro yeah. Yeah. and it's this bad. No, it's great. Yeah. It's fantastic. We're doing better than any other podcast, so I don't want to hear any negativity. We have, <laughs> we have at least three weeks left. Things are going to get real rough. The content's bad, but at least it sounds good in your ears. So, uh. Dan, did you eat any different variety of spam this week? Uh, uh, actually, we had a bit of a scarcity problem locally. Um, but Bob did some interesting spam technology. So thank you again, everyone, for joining us for our opening segment, Dealing with Spam with Bob and Mr. Feel. <laughs> Bob, tell us about your spam oh, no. experiment of the week. I had two spam dishes this week. Yeah. Uh, Ooh. Ooh. One was just uh, fried spam and eggs. So I just fried some eggs and then yeah. put or fried some spam up in chunks and yeah. put it on there. Yeah, that's pretty standard. Always had spectacular. And that's just normal. That was normal spam? Yeah, it was normal spam for that. Okay, one. so how did, how did that go? You that was good pretty experience, good. well-rounded? I, I, yeah, I, that's the first I've had just that much, just spam straight. <laughs> um, that's a lot like... Uh, I Potted uh, meat? Uh, hash. Hash. Can't, yeah, can't hash. Bob, no joke, ate a can of hash and I'm like Bob are you Cosgrove from fucking Freakazoid I'm like Bob what are we gonna do for food exactly <laughs> Bob's like I'm gonna have a can of hash and a cup of coffee and I'm just like what the fuck is that's that's a thing a cartoon cop does not a human but yeah if you ever <laughs> if you're ever in the meat section the canned meat the just it's a can of hash and get mm -hmm. some fried some eggs. It's great. And then pick up a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and, make, and make sure every morning to pick up the bottle of milk that they deliver. Bob, you, <laughs> you can... gotta use you gotta use high heat so you get the crispy bits. Otherwise, it's no good. Right, right. Of course, Bob. You can eat canned meat and still date a woman. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> Uh, the other thing I did uh -huh. was uh, I had low sodium spam. Oh, okay, that sounds disappointing. Um, I turned it, it does. Into, I, I I used teriyaki uh, sauce like I made myself, and that basically equivalent like equaled it out. It tasted pretty all right. So you're telling me it was a lot of sodium with the with the soy sauce and whatnot. You're telling me you were too good to get the pre-made teriyaki spam. You made your own. That's right. I also didn't see it at the store, but I've heard nothing but horrible things about the teriyaki spam, so I think it's probably better if I make it myself. Bob, look, gelatinous is an objective word. How you feel about the word gelatinous is very <sighs> subjective. <laughs> mm. I was able to fry up the spam and then just put the teriyaki sauce on. The teriyaki sauce absorbed very quickly. Oh, uh, yeah, it's it just was like... <laughs> it was uh, kind spam of spam is porous. Yeah, yes. spam is very absorbent. Weirdly enough, so that made it very sweet. <laughs> but it was all right. It was all right. Yeah, I'd probably do it again. Would you change anything if you could go back? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see when I get there. Okay, uh, Mister Feel, what did you do in this week of spam? I had spam hot and spicy, or as I will be referring to it in, <laughs> in the future, spam white people flavor. <laughs> okay, because why? Because it has the... F uh, it, uh, it is not hot and spicy at all. Oh. Not even a little bit. Oh. It has the faintest, faintest hint of, like, a Tabasco. I knew it. I was like, of it's course. fucking jalapeno, isn't it? Tabasco's really no, hot. No, there's, there's a separate yeah. jalapeno flavor, but there's just, there's just this very faint, like, 
a little tiny bit of vinegar and maybe like buffalo sauce flavor with no I, heat. I had some Tabasco once and it almost made me throw up. It was so hot. <laughs> okay. KZ. Yeah. Tabasco is not very hot. You know, you know what my, uh, my limit is on hot food. What's your limit? White bread? <laughs> uh, Doritos, but the spicier nacho ones. Those are just too much. They just start burning me up. <laughs> oh my god. It must be rough <laughs> living with Tex-Mex. <laughs> I know. I'm Mexican. <laughs> Man, that's rough. You know what was uh, really spicy for me that I had as a kid? Huh. Uh, I thought pepper spray was like an ingredient or some sort of thing you spray in your mouth, like those mint mouth sprays that they made uh, that were popular around the same time. I sprayed my mouth with pepper spray. <laughs> that was uh, hot as hell, uh, as it turns out, and not good. Also, it sprayed, it sprayed way wider than I was expecting, so I didn't get my eyes or my nose, but I did get my lips. So that was not Is great. it... Um is it hotter than Tabasco, would you say? Or? Uh, yeah, it's a lot hotter than no, Tabasco. A little, a little, little bit, bit worse hotter. than Flaming Hot Cheetos? Because I can't deal with Flaming Hot Cheetos. Just, They're too much. That's a little bit worse than Flaming Hot Cheetos. Made okay. to uh, made to uh, repel horny bears. Yeah. Oh, no. Not great to put in your mouth. <laughs> great to, you know, fuel some suicidal ideation, though, let me tell you. So is the spam good? I mean, it tasted mostly like normal spam, so sure. <laughs> there you go. I, I don't think I'd ever buy it again. <laughs> Sounds like I need to try Unless this. Unless it was the only variety Acceptable. <laughs> I, uh, I will definitely double my efforts to find a can of spam and do something interesting with it in the next week. Uh, and, of course, me and Bob are going to try those off-the-grid waffles with high protein. I, mean, I don't want to hear about these off the grid waffles ever again. <laughs> we don't want to be doxed by our waffles, Dan. We have to get them off the grid. <laughs> Dan's going to go insane and make spam croquettes. N no. Oh. oh, man. That actually sounds like it might be good. No. I'm, I'm waiting for spam kebab where it's just the whole brick. <laughs> <sighs> okay. You know what? We're, we're out of the spam segment now. Uh, we're okay. just gonna don't worry I'm gonna speed up this podcast so we get through it Casey I know you're a little rough no nah, so, it's okay so it's good we, we, we will make it through this we have a it's, lot of video games to talk about yeah and you know we're out of the spam podcast uh, part of the podcast now uh, so Bob can talk about the banana pancakes he made this week Bob <laughs> tell, tell them what the fuck you did <laughs> the, well, Bob, banana, what did you do banana pancakes are where you just you instead of having flour and other stuff like that you normally have for pancakes is just smash up bananas, two eggs, and then some vanilla. What? <laughs> yeah, I, I've heard of this. You can find recipes for it all over YouTube and stuff. Um, I used the one from Tasty. Uh, it's interesting. It's not. It has the shape of a pancake, but none of the texture or taste. Yeah, when I eat of a banana, not. the last fucking thing I think to myself is, I want to replace other textures in food with this texture. <laughs> right? No. So, oh. The seared outside's pretty all right, but... uh, Also, it smells like fried uh, plant plantains. Or Yeah, fried banana, fried plantains, whatever you like. Yeah. It, it has a great smell. I, I probably enjoyed your banana pancakes more than you. Yeah, after <laughs> eating the whole two pancakes, three pancakes I made, I was like, I feel a little sick. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Bob's like, oh, I got a tummy ache. <laughs> so uh, I'm not going to do that again. I, I have ingredients for regular pancakes now. But it's okay. I'm going to use the bananas for uh, for smoothies. Bananas work out in smoothies. I don't know the bananas work out for me in any other capacity other than eating them straight because they're cheap and smoothies. Um, And bananas are fucked up, man. They go bad really quick. They're insanely cheap because they go bad really quick and they need to sell them in huge quantities and they're all going to be wiped out by a famine in our lifetimes. Weird. What a weird fucking fruit. Uh, fuck fruit, though. Let's talk about video games. So, everyone, I'm, I'm excited. After four and a half years of waiting, mm -hmm. I finally played Riptide GP2 on the PlayStation 4. 
See, is 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 this why is this why you played it so that you could save after four and a half years and then say Riptide? <laughs> uh, because if so, I respect it. I bought the game four and a half years ago based on the recommendation, ironic or otherwise, of a certain Kyle Bosman who used to work at Game Trailers and do the show The Final Bossman. Uh, mm-hmm. You can find a link. Kind of the, encrypted. You can find. <laughs> You can find a link in the description showing you that video where he he could describe to you, audience, what Riptide GP2 is. Uh, but if you want a brief description, imagine something between Wave Race 64 and Jet Moto. Like, waves are caused by vehicles going through the water, and your vehicle is heavy, heavily physically affected by that. Um, but... It's a normal racing game. There's also stunt modes. Uh, the career makes you do a number of different modes on that. Um, and you can buy a number of different jet skis and uh, upgrade them with money. It's a really fun game. I genuinely enjoyed it for the six and a half hours it lasted me. And as Kyle Bosman said, it's a fun game. It's easy. You play it. And then when you when you beat it, you get a platinum. <laughs> 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 like you just hit the end of the game. And it's like, here's your platinum. There's no way you can hit the end of that game unless you just got one stars most of the way through and not just get a platinum. So that was my rebound game, as I like to put it, after Bunny Must Die stomped my nuts for two days straight. (laughs) Yes, honey. Yeah, it was bad. Uh, I tried the last boss of the game on a low percent run where you can only get 14% of the items in the game, which means you get one, no, two mana notches. So that way you have enough time powers to actually reach the end of the game and the or the three orbs necessary to get there. No health upgrades, no nothing. Uh, the final boss of Bunny Must Die, I tried uh, over 400 times to beat her on a 14% item rate run. It was the hardest thing I think I've ever tried to do in a video game. I tried for over yeah, 12 it was hours. Either me Either me or Feel suggested yesterday that you should get back on that, and Bob just went, no, don't do this to him. It's okay. It's okay, guys. I, I deleted it off my PS4. I'm not going to try again until the PS5 comes out, at which point the input lag will be better, and I'll just I'll try on that. You know, I'm sure it's going to it's gonna work out a lot better. Guys, I went to bed. He was doing this. I woke up. He was still at it. And Bob did this crazy thing where he got a full night's rest. Yeah, it was like eight hours. Oh, yeah, no. I well, tried, what was the occasion? I tried this one. <laughs> what was the occasion? Uh, I tried this one boss for over 12 hours. Oh, wait, hours. never mind. <laughs> also, the save room on the low percent run is nowhere near the boss. So you have to go through like four death rooms. It, so you can die on the way to the boss oh. because you only have enough health to take one or two hits. It's a nightmare. Um, the rest of the run's fun. The final boss is just too much for me to deal with. Um, so I'll never have the platinum and Bunny Must Die, and that's that's a shame because I really love that game. Uh, but that's fine. So Riptide GP2 was my rebound game. It was uh exactly what I needed at that point in time, despite being a low rent phone game ported over to the PS4. It was uh really fun, and I genuinely recommend it. <laughs> Please go watch Kyle Bosman's video <laughs> on what it is. Uh, and then after that, uh, I was like, you know what? I don't have a platinum trophy in Mega Man 11. That's fucking weird. I have a platinum trophy in Mega Man or Mighty Number no. 9. So why the fuck wouldn't I have one in Mega Man 11? I went back, found out why. Dr. Light's trial is insanely difficult. I think it's a lot more possible than the final boss of Bunny Must Die on 14% item rate, but it is very difficult. It's, uh, you get one chance at a 30 room long run. Uh, most of the rooms have spikes all over it or pits all over it. And you need to do very delicate timing and use your weapons very ideally to get across it. And, uh, it's been, uh, one and a half years since I played Mega Man, uh, 11. And I forgot which weapons were in what direction on the right analog stick and how to use them well. So it's a learning experience, but I'm having fun with that. Whereas Bunny Must Die was nothing but misery for over 12 hours uh, trying to get the low item rate boss kill. It's don't I do not recommend that, but I do recommend Bunny Must Die if you're okay with a game that feels janky, but has a lot of charm and is mildly punishing. 
Uh, Riptide GP2 is great for anyone who just doesn't want to think. <laughs> <laughs> you you want to like race jet skis? That's cool. That game's like dirt cheap. Maybe look into it if it goes on sale. I guess. But uh, <laughs> don't forget the key feature. You can turn off the music. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that's right even kyle bosman's like stop tweeting at me about the music just turn it off i didn't bob hates me <laughs> it's so hey, it's bad. only six it's only seven dollars on psn right now Beal. see there you go i don't need some people telling me about the values of video games after what damn video games did to me last night oh i bought it already too yes <laughs> in which he bamboozled us into buying kills on Shadowfall. It was six dollars. What a value. <laughs> what a value. It's okay. We're gonna extract value from that one way or another. Uh, <laughs> uh should, Days Gone is on sale too. I should re I should repuy that for the PS5. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I do want to see Hell how that yeah. runs on the PS5. Hell yeah. Um Aside from that, the, I haven't played Final Fantasy VII Remake because I got a digital copy that's been locking it a few hours from this recording. And uh, mm -hmm. I beat Resident Evil 3, but I think we all played Resident Evil 3, so we'll save that towards the end of this. Uh, mm -hmm. I can't think of anything else I played. So, uh, Bob, what did you play? I think most of what I played was Resident Evil 3. Um, you went back to Neo 2 a bit. In a little bit of Neo 2. I I'm still not have not played enough of that to really say any more about it. It's it's still fun. I'm still enjoying it, of course. Ah, oh, shit. I forgot a yep. really important thing. What, what was it, Dan? Uh, should have gone in our food segment. Uh, so I was in a hurry this morning putting out the podcast. That's why I went up a little late on Thursday. So my breakfast was a double-sized baby Ruth because of the fucking tie-in promotion with Fall Fancy 7. <laughs> and I felt so fucking <laughs> sick after eating that, man. You needed to get that for the the theme and the bangle. Yeah, I needed oh, this, this reminds theme or the bangle. I, I, you know, it's so important that I make myself fucking ill eating a candy bar instead of actual food. You could have just no thrown time. it away and then just use the receipt. I was hungry and didn't have time, Casey. It seemed like a perfect solution. The perfect should plan. I have a Nutri-Grain bar. So I had another food thing that Dan that I forgot until Dan. <laughs> oh no! Had a ah, thing. Stop it! This is a domino effect. <laughs> uh, what's up, Gil? Uh, I ate. I try. I tried the Wendy's breakfast. Oh nice! Okay, cool. <laughs> Great. This is. A I had the. Uh, I had the <laughs> breakfast baconator. This one goes out to the person who said, "I'm just glad they stopped talking about Dan eating Wendy's breakfast food on this podcast." How was the breakfast baconator feel? <laughs> I mean, it was okay. The problem with all fast food sauces is it just tastes like sage. That's like true. That's all you get. That's true. Uh, most fast food sausage does just taste like sage. And I don't know. There's some other quality I can't really put my finger on. Whereas, like, good sausage tastes like peppers and things, you know? And meat. Yeah. I probably would have preferred it if there was just, like, a thin hamburger patty with the egg and the bacon instead of a sausage patty. Uh, Bob was 100% right, though. They need to just throw their fries in the garbage and replace them with those uh, yeah. potato yeah. wedges. Oh, yeah. Or at 100%. least make them available at all times. Uh, fuck your ketchup. Fuck your normal fries. Just give us those potato wedges and then sell it with country gravy. <laughs> <laughs> or that ch Swiss cheddar so or Swiss, Swiss dipping sauce or oh, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, the, the weird, like, what, what type of cheese was it? I think it is Swiss. I think it is. Is it? Okay, but the, the weird cheese sauce they put on there in addition to the normal cheese for the Baconator. That's a good sauce. It's really weird, though. I got confused because I was like, it's already got cheese. And it was like that Nietzsche Joe face where she's eating a thing and she doesn't know what the expiration date is. Oh. I had that face e eating it and being like, but what's this cream? <laughs> it, ta mm. it tastes savory, but I can't figure it out. Uh, overall, would you recommend the breakfast Baconator? <laughs> No. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that's where I was too. Yeah. That sigh is all I needed to hear. <laughs> <laughs> but we would all the three of us at very least would definitely recommend those breakfast fries. Because they're like potato wedges, but not too huge. Yes. I did have the Wendy's breakfast at some point in the past Millennium. two months. <laughs> I don't know, whenever they whenever they debuted it, I was like, all right, let's like give this a try. Uh 
Yeah, that was those fries are good. That was about two months ago. Yeah, because it came out while Vox was down here. Oh yeah, yeah. And that was roughly two, a little over two months ago, or a little under two months ago. Yeah, yeah, no, those are good fries, but we need to get back to games. Bob, do you have any other games uh, to I, talk about? I just realized uh, we played some Grand Blue Fantasy. Um, we got those new yeah, characters, yeah. so that was fun. Uh, they also apparently added a stage you can buy, which isn't included with the character pass. What? Yeah, so the yeah, $4 I, well, stage. I, I, bought, I bought that, so we played on it at least twice on that stream we did. I didn't notice. Maybe it wasn't when you were fighting I me or didn't, something. I didn't notice either. How very uh, might unremarkable. Have been field then. Either that or we just didn't notice was that it, it was like a different the, stage. Was it like the jungle one? It's like the purple looking one. Yeah, I rem I vaguely remember it. That's weird. Yeah, I paid the like $4 to, to grab that. It's so weird that there's just one stage is $4. Like, what? I mean, it's also weird to release this game and have a season pass uh, that will be done in be one month where you buy a game. Two characters from the season pass are already out. The rest of them will be out in, in, within a month. Yeah. Yeah. This is a bizarre release. I'm still enjoying where, where it. One, where one of them is just the default character only. It's a girl. Look, the, she has new moves. <laughs> she should have been in the game. Sure, for she sure. does have mostly different moves. Yeah. She's featured prominently in one of the menus. She is. So, you know, uh, the main character of Grand Blue Fantasy's name is Gran. Uh, Dejita's name is the final two characters of fantasy reversed. Oh, you mean so like the Japanese uh, characters it, for it? Yes. Yeah, so her name is Taji reversed. So you get like Jita. Oh, yeah, because God. it's pronounced uh, Fantaji. Like final fantasy. Oh, uh, yeah. Ugh. They really should have just had. Nah, she's blue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it makes more sense. I don't like this explanation. It has a real. Nomura explains why this collection was called two point eight energy. <laughs> I much. I much prefer when the near director explains that his is the square root of 1.5. People are like, why is that? And he's like, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Thanks, You know, Yoko I believe Tar. Eraserhead is my most spiritual film. <laughs> Elaborate on that. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's good. Uh, did you play anything else, Bob? No, just just the mostly the time was playing Resident Evil. Yeah. Resident Evil's really good, but we're going to talk about that in a bit, so we're going to move to Mr. Field. Mr. Field, did you play anything other than Final Fantasy VII or potentially Resident Evil 3? No, I, uh, but I finished uh, Super Danganronpa 2, Goodbye Despair. Hello, So now segment. I have to talk about it. <laughs> oh, right, we played Ape Escape, uh, Dan. I forgot about that. Oh, yeah, it's Ape Escape, bro. We played Ape Escape. Go watch twitch.tv slash gigaboots. We played Ape Escape. We're playing more Ape Escape. By the time this comes out, we have, we will have beaten Ape Escape 2, unless Calamity strikes. Thank you. Okay, go ahead, Phil. Uh, it's rare when you play a game that feels like an apology for the first game in the series. But that yeah, is what... Yeah, real good apology, like the new Hangman's Gambit. They fixed it. Yeah, that was that's that's still bad. In fact, that's debatably <laughs> worse. But everything else is so much fucking better. It kind of embarrasses the first game. I enjoyed it quite a lot. Uh, I would give it a strong nine. Really? Even despite the puke? Yes, even though the writer very obviously had as a fetish for girls vomiting. That he can't keep under control sometimes. <laughs> oh, body fluids in general, considering how every character is just constantly oozing from every orifice. Please look forward to V3. <sighs> yes, people have warned me. <laughs> uh, but it's real great how the game is like Metal Gear Solid 2, and it tells you this by going, This is like Metal Gear Solid 2. Oh my god. Like it's all it's almost that blatant. Where literally the writer just leans here. This is like Metal Gear Solid 2. I'm smart also. <gasps> That's not how that works. 
<laughs> it works surprisingly well. Oh man, we got Mamoru Yoshi out here. Fucking come on! Man. Uh, <laughs> all the voice acting performances are very good. Johnny <laughs> Young Bosch really okay. hits it out of the fucking park. One second, Bob. <laughs> Mamoru Yoshi. He's he doesn't go. I'm like Metal Gear Solid too. He goes at the end of a movie. What if I was up my own ass the whole time? And we're like, we know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> What if I read one philosophy paper <laughs> and then oh. recited it out of order three times? Mind blown. How's how, is this a continue feel? Sorry. <laughs> we have feelings about Ghost of the Shell 2. What a, fu uh, what a fucking movie. Derek anyway. Stephen Prince also really fucking sells it. His voice performance is great in the game. Uh, I forget the motherfucker's name who voices adult Gohan. Kyle A. Bear. Who who delivers a performance that's just me talking like this for the entire his entire character. <laughs> that's all his character is. Top tier character. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh it's also real great how uh they added mini games because in the because it's it's like it's an ace attorney s game. So in the so in the first game you had uh play hangman and it's bad. And that was pretty much it, other than pointing out contradictions. Uh, in this, you have... They enhanced the pointing out contradictions, because now you can agree with people when you couldn't do that before. You could only tell them they were wrong, which led to weird syntax things. Uh, they can also say, no, I'm not wrong, fuck you. And uh, they also added... To go with your truth gun, they added truth swords... So you can get into a rebuttal battle where they talk at you and you flick the stick around to cut all their words to pieces and then you swing a big sword at uh, a statement you want to contradict. Uh, and then they made Hangman worse. <laughs> but, the, but the funniest one is the logic dive <laughs> where, the, where the protagonist Hajime Hinata uh, has to go into his big think dimension and skateboard down a wireframe half pipe to reach the conclusion of an answer. Uh, which I did not understand until somebody told me that is in there because his Japanese voice actor is Detective Conan. Oh. 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 I see. So he skateboards down the logic half pipe. <sighs> Those are my favorite ones. My favorite mini games in Danganronpa are the ones where you know what the answer is and you know what, what they want from you, but they're going to make you play a three and a half minute long mini game. <laughs> yes. To form a word. That's better than the hangman. Where, by the way, it's not even fucking hangman. Hangman is the wrong word because it's just spell this out in order with the worst mini game in the world. And you, you don't even get a single letter to start with. So sometimes you're just like, I know what I'm I know the idea I'm supposed to convey, but they gave me two seven letter words. What do they want from me? This, this oh, is incredible. a crackhead game. <laughs> it is like, it is the ultimate crackhead game. <laughs> every single character is the biggest crackhead I've ever seen in my life. I, I hit the problem and people started laughing at me, or a character would say something and then I'd exaggerate it more to make a joke. Mm -hmm. And then the next line would be them saying that. <laughs> this isn't the most crackhead one. I'm so pumped. <laughs> I might die. You will. <laughs> you absolutely will. I don't think I can deal with a character more crackhead than, Br than Nagito voiced by Bright Bryce Pappenbrook giving the best performance of piece of human garbage I've ever heard. Every syllable makes you want to knife him in the throat. Uh, you you absolutely as depressing it is as it is. You two have to play the first game first because otherwise the entire ending just does not make sense. Like the last four hours of the game are just nonsense if you did not play the first game. Great. <laughs> Sophia, really good, would though. you would you recommend people fall down into this mine shaft that you have fallen into? <laughs> yes, I would. <laughs> Extreme. <laughs> uh, 
Fantastic. Um, did you play any other games? No, not not other, not that everybody didn't play. Okay, so we're going to KZ. KZ, did you play anything other than Final Fantasy VII and Resident Evil Three? I did not, Dan, and I feel like it would be perfect for our viewers if I didn't talk about Final Fantasy VII yet when no one else has played it. So why don't you massage our way into a Resident Evil 3 thing since we're doing an FF7 spoiler cast later. Um, let's see. Okay, so I guess we're going we're gonna to talk about Resident Evil 3 and we're going to open this up for a bit of spoilers um, because people aren't getting a spoiler cast outside of this. Um... How the fuck do you talk about Resident Evil 3? Resident Evil 3 is uh, pretty different from 2 in that it is much more... It's much more like the end of 2, like the, once you leave the police department. Yeah, because you, 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 would, you would spend forever in the raccoon-like PD doing puzzles and stuff, mm -hmm. and then you hit the sewers, and then that game just kind of goes and doesn't stop <laughs> yeah and then you go to umbrella and it just you know it has it yeah. keeps it keeps going and it keeps you taking you to new places and the beginning area of this has a little bit of retreading you know you do across it but it's so much smaller than rcpd and the back end is kind of most of the game i i honestly don't think that's a bad thing but i've seen people out there say they dislike that um how did other people on this mm. feel like is that worse to you guys that it's more set piece and narrative designed with a linear progression bob what what is your take on this i actually prefer this but i'm i come from the place of i don't really like horror games that much i like i got into resident evil 4 with 4 really that was when i started really liking them and this is more that angle of like yeah i'm just going around doing cool stuff and there's new areas i'm finding new creatures and it's fun mm -hmm. um so i it appealed more to me but I can definitely see where people might not get the same thing from it. So I, I understand both sides of that. I mean, just like with Doom Eternal being a different style of game and structure to the gameplay and stuff than Doom 2016, I like Resident Evil 2's style and I also like Resident Evil 3's. I don't think it's intrinsically worse. Um, in fact, as a game, I think this is even more replayable than 2. Um... Yeah, I, I, I think I, I can agree with that. Um, I think the intro is a bit rougher for replays because it is a bit more on rails until, That's you true. Get yeah. the until you get to the subway part because then it stops trying to introduce you to the city and you have to <laughs> run over Nemesis again and go through all of that. But once you once you get into it, it's actually really easy to replay. And of course, when you beat it, you have that shop and that shop just straight up has key items in it. Yeah, that shop's really cool where you can just buy uh, coins that you hold to become more powerful, buy weapons with infinite ammo that wait for you in your weapon crate. That shop yeah, is incredible. Yeah, infinite rocket launcher is in there. That one thing makes my brain immediately go, I need to play through it again now. <laughs> like, Yeah. I, yeah. I, I did a, a super rush playthrough after beating it. Where I, I went for a bunch of... Because it also gives you this huge goal set. Like, oh yeah, beat the game with that mm -hmm. opening item box. Beat the game with only using one health item. And all these things. So I just ran through doing a, a bunch of those. Mm -hmm. And that was a fun playthrough. And now I have a gun that can make... Like, it makes a zombie's head explode. Or as long as you get, like, critical hit shots, they're just dead in one shot. Um, oh, and when you, like, uh, stand guy. in place. Because I did, I, did, I did not know in Resident Evil 2 Remake that... If you stand still while aiming, it makes the crosshair shrink, and then you do better shots. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it, it visually becomes a dot in the center and just closes down a yeah. ton. Oh, uh, yeah, this mm -hmm. is th this gun's called the some sort of, like, Raiden or something. Yeah, it's Raiden. Yeah, yeah it's the Raiden. <laughs> but uh, you, it literally, like, you don't need to do that. You just need to actually get, make the hit. Like, you, as long as you hit their head, it takes a while to recharge, but they're just dead. And the same thing was pretty much any any creature you have to hit it it's weak point and they're just dead it's crazy overall i think um that this format was really fun not like i did it in one sitting on on a stream and i had a really good time with it but as someone who had no idea um who had who hadn't actually played the original re3 i just heard that it's the game where the 
the nemesis like chases you the whole time. Uh, it kind of felt weird that he just chases you in one area in the game and then he just becomes a recurring boss fight that just pops up. I feel like there should have been maybe one more traditional area like the city in the game where he was still trash bag nemesis mode where you got to like fight him occasionally and he dropped like the suitcases that had the upgrades that you could get. I feel like there needed to be at least a little bit more of that because it he he I felt like he had less of a presence here than like Mr. X in terms of a nuisance that like follows after you. Mm-hmm. But he definitely wouldn't have worked in the other areas. Yeah. As a guy who follows you in any of the other ones. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Also I I like that instead of being a constant nuisance like Mr. X, the nemesis has a very clear evolution as it goes. Yeah. So it works more towards mm-hmm. that than it isn't a Mr. X thing, I feel. Um, mm-hmm. I, I've heard, and I haven't played through the original Resident Evil 3 completely. Maybe someday this year I will do that in a single sitting. Uh, I intend to. Mm. No, no announcements mm. on what month that'll even happen, but uh, it's something I value as an experience, even though it's probably bad. <laughs> I remember uh, even though it being back, incredibly bad when yeah, I rented it. <laughs> yeah, I gave it two chances. I gave it a chance when it first came out. I was a huge Resident Evil fan, uh, of course, mostly of two, because two is a much more polished and better made game than one by such a huge fucking chasm. Uh, when I tried three, it just didn't stick at all, and I, I returned it to the rental store without even beating it. Uh, tried it again years and years later, like a decade later. Still didn't love it. Um, but I'm going to beat it. I'm going to beat it and check it out and see what they cut from this new game. Because I hear they cut at least one area. Um, and like Whenever I hear people talk about it, they say the clock tower and the park. Yeah, and Those definitely weren't in. That and apparently the final area, they just made it a different area but still had parts of the original where it was like a disposal plant in the original. Mm -hmm. But here they're like, fuck it, it's a cool lab. (laughs) Yeah, it's really funny that the door from the hospital thing to the cool lab is like, what did they call it in the the notes that were written? The forbidden door? Yeah, something like that. More people are going through the forbidden door as of late, and I'm like, Jesus Christ. (laughs) I laughed when they said, this is Nest (laughs) 2.0. Yes, it seemed pretty buzzwordy. It seemed web 2.0-y. I'm like, oh man, it's it's the sequel, and this one takes place b- before 2. <laughs> I think that, depending on how insane the original disposal unit was, uh-huh. I feel like they they had to make it something to do with Umbrella, because that would be psychotic and if it wasn't Umbrella. Yes, <laughs> it's the sort of thing was like, it, it, it wouldn't make sense as a disposal plant. It would make sense as some sort of like chemical treatment thing, like mm-hmm. just giant vats of chemicals and some sort of like chemical company, which at that point, why wouldn't it be Umbrella? <laughs> right. So yeah, that's what I was thinking too, but I'll find out when I go through that game. Overall, this game's really, really gorgeous. Absolutely killer. Mm-hmm. Ran great on my PS4 vanilla. Um, just a little soft on the image. Can't wait for that PS5 because I am not buying a pro in 2020. The intro to this game was very appropriate for our current time and not at all awkward. Uh, I didn't find it awkward. I let the game take me away from the current times, but I understand why I, I, other I people I thought it couldn't. was cool, and it shocked me, and then I watched other people play it, and they looked so uncomfortable. Huh. Mm. How did um? How did we feel about the boss fights? Because there's a lot of those. Like a decent amount. Uh, I really like when, uh, <laughs> when Jill, at the end, sticks a PS5 in Nemesis's mouth and turns <laughs> it on, and... <laughs> <laughs> It goes through like six walls. (laughs) All our games are crashing. (laughs) You need like six power cylinders to be able to power the the UMD ejector. Yes, Yes. the UMD launched so fast. (laughs) So fast and so hard. (laughs) The person who designed it looks like the dude in the stadium explaining that thing to that chick sitting next to him. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Listen, we designed this thing to launch a UMD like a rail cannon. <laughs> PS5 is very powerful. Um, 
Uh, yeah, no, I had I had a great time with this game. Uh, lots. I I enjoyed the boss design. Uh, there were just like. Like, the dodge mechanic is such a weird thing conceptually for me in a Resident Evil game that I was still trying to get used to exactly how to use it by the end of the game, but, you know, I got it down eventually. Um, I uh, tried to cheese the... Uh, dodge. I tried to cheese the final form really hardcore. I was like, oh. I'm just going to keep mm-hmm. eating herbs and shoving these cylinders in. I don't give a fuck what you're going to do. He picks you up and one hits you. <laughs> yep. This game has a um hilarious amount of things killing you in one hit. Uh, like those uh like the gamma hunters. Yeah, the uh. Oh yeah, you have the oh, gamma where form they of like the hunters. open your mouth and split you yeah, in the, half, but then there's the uh, the the hunters that sh- first show up in the hospital that just just slit your neck and then yeah, you're done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that they can do it from your caution health. You're just got dead. I've had them do it from fine. Really? They, do it, um, they can do it from full. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's just, it's one of their specific attacks. Oh, one okay. of their specific, like, leap slashes Even does the, it. Yeah. The, you, um, what is it? The pale head zombies? Yes. Like the regenerators? Yes. Yeah. I feel like I died in the green to them once on one hit. Whoa. Like, there was, like, it, like they came behind me and got me in one of their moves, and it just dropped me and i was like are you, are you serious <laughs> you? and of course it was that one that one section where they make you get all of the fuses that takes like 10 minutes i'm like mother those fucking white heads yes i hate them because they make you go against your in all your resident evil instincts of like no just shove the magnum in their mouth yeah once you get to that nose they it's can like eat, they yeah, can they... eat like six grenades uh yeah, they just I, go for I had it. the funniest situation uh, of noping through enemies where they want you to get something in a room that has two of those hunters in it, just in the room uh-huh. as Carlos. Flash. And, like, I, and I didn't have a flash or anything on me because I didn't know about the room that has like six grenades in it. So I was like, that's it. I'm running in and dodging. And then I ran in and just kept punching them in the face because that's what your dodge is as Carlos. And just grabbed what I needed and got out. Getting closer and closer to roundhouse kicking zombies in the face. Uh, I think the um, the dialogue in this was really, really good for the most part. There's some really strong Devil May Cry 1 energy to the end of the game, <laughs> and that's great. Oh my god, that entire, that entire yeah. final cutscene is a Devil May Cry 1 cutscene. And that entire final fight with the final, with the final version of Nemesis also is a very strong moon disc moment yeah. yeah well either that mm-hmm. or you know she's looking at nemesis and she's like finally a man of honor in this place <laughs> flock off <laughs> thunder faith <laughs> just going into the the raccoon police department and i'm like oh cool i like how this is connecting to the resident evil 2 a lot i thought all that was cool like them explaining why there was a bomb in the police department in the first place yeah, but then you wa- you you walk up to one of those doors with like the club or the spade on it, and Carlos goes, "This is a weird fucking door," <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, it is." Yeah, and then the guy in the radio is like, "Don't worry about the weird doors." <laughs> then you blow up the uh, the shower, and you and that's mm-hmm. why it's it's like that in RE2. Then there's just 85 zombies in the next room that's four feet by four feet. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Holy they, shit. They, they, they also have that door that's um, voice activated, and he's like, "What is this sci-fi bullshit?" Yeah, yeah no, that was and apparent, funny. Apparently, as hell. that has four optional lines where I guess he tries to get <laughs> it to work on his own. So I need to go back and do that. I tried one of them. It was pretty good. That's really that, funny. That, that that being said, you this is a video game as video game where it's like you need to get his you need to get this person's voice how do you do it tape recorder all right what's the tape recorder go it's the character going i am this character's name do you know who the and fuck like, i am i am guy who is <laughs> let in this room and then the door opens <laughs> yeah it's an, imp- an impeccable script yes. so many lines made me bust out laughing uh, oh, for I, example, I, I must have missed that part. Was, I only it, got the part where it's him be, getting reported to HR. <laughs> for example, the moment where he, uh, where you know the game's ending, and she just goes, 
uh, it's not really zombies, it's greed. <laughs> this <laughs> game's deep. I, I shriveled <laughs> into a raisin. <laughs> <laughs> the end. <laughs> it's just that. Nemesis is on fire, falls into a lake. <laughs> Bitch can't even swim. <laughs> Yeah, no, this this thing's totally consistent across the whole thing, so it doesn't come off as, like, bad. In fact, I, I really do, like, I think the writing's delightful, because uh, it's yeah. so consistently funny. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's fantastic, and I want to go through it again, but, um... You got other things right now? <laughs> I, I need to get back to Neo 2 at some point. <laughs> Tell Bob about it. <laughs> yeah, that's going on the back burner for a while. <laughs> yep. I'm blessed in that I never played it, so. Yeah, you're safe. You Well, yeah, you, you gotta save yourself like... for getting greedy. <laughs> Fucking God. I was I was just gonna say I'm gonna save myself for Neo 1 on the PS5 where it might run right. <laughs> you know, before we move too far past Raw. it, I, I, I've got this out on other content, but I want in a podcast how uh, okay. Carlos is Chad from Bleach, and that's great. <laughs> Yes, it is. The first yes, time, is. first He's Chad, if he opened his eyes, the first time someone showed me the redesign, it wasn't even that long after I had seen Chad for the first time. Like it was like one or two months after I'd been shown Chad by you, motherfuckers. And I'm like, that's the same guy. <laughs> it, it's funny because they they have the classic outfits, and it's like, oh, this Jill one, you know, it's, this this works. I can see the original version. Carlos, it's just. Here's a bad haircut. <laughs> yeah, Carlos is really bad. No, don't even make a new outfit for him. Just give him the bad hair. I'm disappointed they did not do the RE2 thing of having uh, the PlayStation models as a <sighs> costume. Maybe it's coming later. That That's always possible. They've updated hope, two I with some so. stuff. Yeah. They should just put more shit in the shop. <laughs> yes. Holy shit, Flame Knife. Yeah, Flame Knife yes. is pretty great. Ugh. Also, the fact I was just barely not I, able to think, afford um, the infinite ammo handgun after my first playthrough the, hurt. That's the last thing I bought. Like, I, I did another standard playthrough of just trying to go through it fast, and that gave me, like, 8,000 points, so I just picked up the gun. I think the shop was in the second RE7 DLC 2. Huh. Apparently, the, uh, the regenerating zombies were in RE2's DLC as well. Like the the pale heads, the uh the like the weird roguelike mode. One of uh. them. I just heard people say that it was not a new enemy. It was in one of the extra things that they put out for RE2. Yeah, uh, Resident Evil Three is a little thrifty in certain ways, but it didn't bug me. Yeah, I said this on my stream where I went, if this is what low rent Capcom's going to be, then damn. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. yeah, exactly. I'm like, thank God. I wish other studios could hit this level on, on high rent. Right. And that's the thing. Like, if this is low rent Capcom a year after high rent Capcom and this is the full level of drop, then this is exceptional. I'm all for them going back to the era of Capcom where it's like, Yearly installments. Speaking of which, we got some news later. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Please yeah. look forward to that. Oh boy. I feel like I, I really want something like this for Double Bay Cry, but I don't know if they'll do it. <laughs> That'd be great. It, it would be great. <laughs> would you get a remake of one, Bob, on the RE engine? Is that... Oh my god, that would be amazing. <laughs> See, I was thinking two, that this is how they do the two. It's just the low, the lower follow-up to five. Oh no, they do one first and then two. Yeah, but that's going to be great because think RE Engine version of the of the DMC two room. Oh, they they will <laughs> they will figure out a way to make that a real room. <laughs> or or uh, D, uh RE Engine version of Building Face. <sighs> God, two had so imagine, many bad. Imagine, imagine some R of those things in VR. Yeah. RE Engine version of the No, I was supposed to be king of this world. Oh, none of the none of the lines are redubbed. <laughs> I here's your yeah, crown. I, if, yeah, I if, I want it to be, you know, one of those remakes where it's we redid all the visuals, we did all of this same voice, the same entire voice track. Nothing's so, changed on that. So bad. Like they, that's one of them they'd have to tear out so much that was just not done and was really bad. They, they remake DMC2 and you still don't know who directed it. 
We know who landed the plane. That's all we needed to know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any other comments before we close this out? Yeah, good. Uh, dial it back, animation director. You're weird. What? What? What's weird? What? Uh, I don't know, the fact that the spider shoves the ovipositor down her throat and fills her stomach with eggs? That was the first time in my entire life where a spider enemy in a horror game had truly made me uncomfortable. Like, back in the day on the yeah. PS1, the spiders in, like, Resident Evil 2 or whatever made me, like, scared. I was like, oh, oh, fuck. They're gonna, they're gonna come at me. That literally made me uncomfortable like in a way that was horrific yes. so i think they accomplished their job there right uh, they, just like they, with the gamma they, kill they intended animation. to make me upset and they did <laughs> also uh i feel like we hit tomb raider levels of jill falls off things uh i feel like she's uh, always no, getting she back get up maimed enough yeah she, uh, she didn't get rebar through the hip yeah no, not not the, the violence level it's just in those games, Laura is constantly falling. That's true, but she's usually landing gracefully on a, a metal pipe. <laughs> yes. Uh, Man, Nemesis don't fuck around. You, you see yeah, all no. the gruesome stuff that happens to uh, to Jill in this is through failure states against fantastical monsters and, and zombies as opposed to, I don't know, she slipped and fell on glass. Yeah. She, she got down she got down off the rope by setting herself on fire she, <laughs> she uh she was reaching for a plate on the top shelf in her kitchen and then slipped and fell in a box full of rusty nails <laughs> her art display of knives she fell on <laughs> <laughs> she's like oh no the my historic display of sharp knives <laughs> The, the way the gamma kills you destroyed me. I could yeah. not handle how it snaps you completely back. Yeah, the part where its tongue literally crams Jill into its mouth so hardcore she snaps backwards Ugh. in half made me literally like the game has me at this hype level. You know, there's, there's hype, there's action, there's anticipation, all these feelings and blood pumping through my veins. And then that happened and it was like I just went cold. My entire body like dropped two degrees, and I was just like, "Oh, like that version of the four moment where Leon's head just rolls if you get chainsawed." No, for me, when that happened, I was like, "Whoa!" And it was like, "Oh my god, that's so over the edge." Like, this, but this, this was ugh. this was just that, but horrifying. Okay, like it's like if someone then shoved their entire fist into re into Leon's decapitated head. Like it made me that like level up because the foley on it. The sound of her bones crushing. Yeah, they, uh, they they again set out to do something and succeeded. Exactly, and that's the thing. Like, I get it. Yeah, this is this is literally horrifying. Uh, good job, you owned me. <laughs> um, one other thing in that spider segment. Oh, did anyone oh. else get Jurassic Park vibes of having to like <laughs> hit those giant levers that looked almost like they were yes. from the set? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> A little. I mean, I was so caught up in how many different areas have a note before you hit them, and they're like, okay, the next area, the next level, Jill is going to have to run to the four sub generators and turn them on. Yes, there every, is a lot of that. In every notes. time that happened, I, I laughed basically because it was so funny. Hello, I'm a scientist here to tell you about World 3 1. <laughs> hey, the, the elevator is this dumb thing where it breaks when you try and use it. That, here's what you do. <laughs> this is how you fix it. We put the four fuses to operate this thing on corners of this room. <laughs> so, so I'm an idiot and I got lost in the hospital for 25 minutes because I didn't realize, oh, they want me to jump from the second floor. But they put... They put <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I didn't <laughs> see the yellow tape. tape. I somehow didn't see the yellow <laughs> tape there for the jump. So I was like, oh, what? What? I took a while. Oh, damn it. I took a while in the hospital because I was like, Carlos ran out of ammo. Oh, no. <laughs> I do. I do like that hospital because it has that fight that activates the frame rate dimension of these things need to explode. Otherwise, this game will crash. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
Uh, what were you saying, Bob? Uh, I, I got lost in the hospital part when I had to find the Magnum and like figure out how to get there. I just couldn't. I literally just wandered around the hospital like, <laughs> everything is blue, everything is dead. <laughs> I'm like, I'm so get glad I streamed that where someone's like, KZ, there's the crawl through thing from before. I'm like, thank you. Oh my God. You're right. I, can't, I would not have remembered. I, walked I up didn't to even that get that message, Miss Carlos. <laughs> I just walked up to it and I was like, that's obviously a squeeze through. Carlos bumps against it, doesn't go through, and I'm like, oh, only women can fit in squeeze-throughs in the Resident Evil universe. Got it. <laughs> His muscles are too big, Dan. I'm it's sorry. It's true! His muscles and hair are too big. <laughs> That's pretty funny, though. I hit that point, and Bob's like, I can help you find the Magnum, and I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. And I'm like, yeah, there's, there's a squeeze-through right here. And he's like, well, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> it was hard for me. Fuck you. Um, okay. Any other comments before we move on? I'm good. Okay. I'm good. Cool. I guess it's time to talk about... Oh, I'm nervous. The pod lords. <gasps> oh, fuck. The pod lords. <laughs> pod lords such as Danny Richardson, E. Lee Broyles... Hoglos rips and omni slashes until stonks go up. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Patreon is a well-made site. Well, I hope they're paying you. <laughs> hey, it's this or the creator studio on YouTube. <laughs> Dank Mormons. Ooh, gravelly. Red Blaze 27. Keyblade Master Jucifer Suzu Shiro Emperor Zero Gundam Tanaka ordering his triple lupa from Taco Bell <laughs> <laughs> Shit you okay? See, I thought we could get through without images, but this really needs it. <laughs> Whatever, I'll be more awake when I edit this Sunday afternoon. <laughs> this is really fucking good. Oh, man. Ugh. Wario contracts a virus that starts with C and passes away. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Still causes an explosion. <laughs> T-posing Wario is very imposing. When is your death stream of Wario World for the GameCube? Uh, never. <laughs> death. <laughs> Just a guess. Uh, for anyone who doesn't get that, please do yourself a favor. Go watch We Share Your Dreams uh, Volume uh, 3. Holy shit. Uh, it was great. It's so good. <laughs> Lady Popcorn. You know what they say about huge demons. They end up in feels like. Why did Patreon reset my name to three names ago? <laughs> <laughs> the well-made website. Uh, I like this one too. Man, like, why do these people keep memeing? I fucking love the pod lords this week. We're all just clowning on fucking Patreon because the last week's bullshit. Uh, yeah, it was it was kind of a train wreck. I I was not pretty... not the patrons' fault. Yeah. I had a good bit last week, but Patreon reverted my name to one from, one from a month ago. Thanks, Patreon, <laughs> says an angry Gary Busey. <laughs> <laughs> He's tilted, literally. Is this what I'm thinking? Ah, shit. <sighs> Foolishness, Mr. Feel. Foolishness. Height controls everything said by a face apt virtual. <laughs> God. <laughs> WTF Spider Man. Mr. I like bacon. I think it was spelled this way. Thanks, Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> when you womp away, you don't hear me say, please, oh baby, stompa. Oh my fucking Jesus! How am I not noticing oh. these with just looking? Oh my god. <laughs> 
god, what a fucking... You gave me hope there was only gonna be one this week, and now we're just getting shot. I'm getting a Bob Toaster, Tarcoin <laughs> Dev Pitch, Cooking Karnov. <laughs> ne never mind, this one's good. <laughs> it got me. The new and improved Hangman's Gambit. And it's just a picture of an uh, L on top of a green star. Yeah, That game is so bad, Dan. That Dandy. game. We hate it so much. <laughs> DFW3K says, good spam, spam, spamming. <laughs> Thank you. I That's like pretty how, like, 40% of these have become Tank and Romp <laughs> I love this one. This one's good. Uh, but you should probably just tweet this. You'll get a million likes. Uh... <laughs> Should have compressed dot exe. <laughs> it's a picture of Cloud Terra edited onto our patron. Oh my god. <laughs> Tragic. Uh, Should have compressed. Should have compressed. Uh, Chase Ray Cheruby Blast. Which I'm, I'm just checking out the profile. And Toad's Tunes. Thank you very much. To our pond lords. Oh man, the fucking toads here just vibing. You know what? I'm gonna add it. Thank you. This isn't a bespoke joke, but I really like this. I like the toad vibe. Toad very excited with his leg showing. <laughs> Look at this. Anyway, thank you very much to our pond lords. Thank you, pod lord. Yeah, thanks, pod lords. And if you would like to become a pod lord or just support us in general, you can go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash GB podcast. For as little as $5 a month, not only do you support us, but you get access to many benefits, such as Cursed Content Club commentary tracks, Cursed Content Committee, that's our user-voted Cursed Content show, early access to Mondo Cool based on how Dan feels at that moment, extended armchair dev pitches, and many other bonuses, including pushing us ever closer to the yawning chasm of Kubo Tight which is how he insists his name is pronounced. That is patreon.com slash GB podcasts. That's right. So we got some news for, uh, for this week. Um, feel, I'm going to need you to, uh, tell me about this platinum news. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> The Platinum 4, which I have taken to calling the Platinum 1.5 because I think I think a port, a new game, a studio, and a joke averages out to 1.5. Whoa. Ooh. But uh they have they came out and said, uh no, we're we're doing a real fourth announcement at some point. The the joke like the joke was but a they joke. still number it number five, so this thing's all a fucking mess. Yes, yeah, so uh so it is now the it will hopefully be the platinum two point five. Instead of just 1.5. Yeah. HD remix. I'd like something substantial. That'd be neat. <laughs> Did oh. I miss the one news story in Feels Bit that I cared about? <laughs> God damn it. I was like, which one will Dan not care about? How is, how is it 2.5 instead of 1.5? Uh, because, because they said, oh, we have another one. Yeah, there's a fifth announcement in the Platinum oh, okay, 4. Okay, that. Okay, that we're just coming. talking about it. Um, <laughs> yes, I call it the Platinum 1.5 because, uh, like I said, a port, a game, a studio, and a joke comes out to 1.5 in my book. I mean, it's that's unfortunate. That's fair. And that's also, they released the worst news of all of, we're breaking your new engine. So that deducts them some points. <laughs> hey, Bob, people who don't understand how hard making an engine is and how much time they could possibly waste, time and money they could waste on R&D, think that making a custom bespoke engine is a universally good thing. Yeah, don't ignore what happened to Metal Gear Solid ignore, for an entire gen. Cr ignore all of the seventh hey, uh, generation of consoles. Yes, Crystal. I heard Crystal Tools is really good. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's great. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna move on quickly out of the platinum zone to talk about uh mysterious things that we found. Uh, Insomniac Games tweeted a 4K image of Ratchet and Clank: Future Tools of Destruction, <laughs> a game that came out 13 years ago. They did this out of nowhere. They just went, man, what what a cool game. To which I noticed and went, man, where'd you get this uh, 4K image? It was upscaled. It was not. It, that is a native <laughs> 4K render. Uh, 
they have images they have an image like that in their post-mortem they did years ago um on that game but it is obviously not a 4k image there it's way lossier it's way smaller um so the question is do they just render out 4k images and release them to people to get them hyped back then or is this something new they've made there was a tr- what could even display a 4K image in 2007? Ah, you're asking the wrong question. What you mean to ask is what could display a 4K image all at once in 2007? Because what they did for Killzone 2, if I remember correctly, is release a huge resolution image that you could punch in on and be like, what a beautiful game. Uh, that was a bit of a thing back then. You know, to some extent, they do that for magazine coverage, too, where they generate a higher resolution image. So it's entirely possible they made a 4K image in twenty in two, 2007, but it just seems suspect that it cropped up recently on Insomniac's Twitter account. I have no speculation based on it. you can't find it anywhere else. Speaking of things you can't find anywhere else, you can't find an interview with Crytek's rendering engineer anywhere <laughs> because he got ceased and desist... <laughs> Deceased, desisted. Ooh. There we go. Up. He got ceased and desisted after we uh, made it. After he said some things about the differences between these two consoles, and then Reset Era found it, and then one of our Twitter followers, uh, which they are a follower now, they weren't when they did it, uh, translated it because it was apparently, if I remember correctly, a Persian interview. They translated it into English, uh, so. Then it got a ton of attention on Reset Era, and then they got ceased and desisted by someone. So the uh, rendering engineer is no longer talking about it. The article in that magazine, which had a really weird name, it was like Polygon, but it wasn't Polygon. It was something like that, uh, has been taken down entirely. Uh, it was a giant, giant article. It was fairly insightful, and the guy basically just went into describing like it's 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 pretty easy to get peak power out of a ps5 uh and that's what people are liking about it um he said as a programmer he prefers the ps5 and you'd be hard pressed to find a programmer that didn't prefer the ps5 over the xbox series x um he also said it's going to be harder to get the full power of the xbox series x because you know things we've already heard described every anywhere. In fact, he leaked literally nothing. He just explained details about the designs of these systems, and that was enough for brimstone and fire. So uh, that interview's gone. Uh, what a shame. Uh, this also reintroduced me to man. People are crazy and stupid during the console wars, but somehow reset era mods find a way to be dumber and stupider and uh, crazier. So, uh, that's fun. <laughs> People are getting... Everyone who posts on Reset Era just looks like Randall from Recess. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's just Jason Schreier. That is correct. <laughs> Reported! <laughs> um, yeah, that, what was it? A, a dude in a thread got banned because he said, I'm going to go ahead and trust a rendering, a rendering engineer more than a random person on Reset Era. And he was banned. <laughs> owned. Yeah, he's he's real owned. That'll teach him. Stupid fanboys. Oh, Where's our news? <laughs> uh, here's Well, that was news. That was news. Now we're going to talk about the hypest shit of this last week instantly becoming or working its way towards becoming one of the most liked images on Instagram in gaming. Yep. Guys, let's talk about the dual sense. Sony showed off the new controller. It is exciting. You know why? Because it's something new. So when I buy that box later this year, I will get new things. Microsoft should do their best to look into doing that at any level. No one buys consoles for there to be anything new. <laughs> Yes. We've decided as of this generation that we forgot how every other generation was exciting. And we know Consoles that this generation was phone. perfect. Oh yeah, it was perfect. And this controller from Microsoft is perfect. There's no way you can prove it. Guys, that's not a fucking thing. We can improve ergonomics on the literally only thing, everything. The only thing that we want from a new console is for it to be the exact same thing, only slightly faster. Uh, it, it's an upgrade. It, it's, like market, phone. it's markedly faster, but yes, they are trying to phonify it, and that kind of annoys me. But let's talk about this controller. 
Mm. What what? Let's get quick reactions from everyone. We'll start with someone who isn't me. KZ, what did you think of this controller to design the dual sets? I think that this. I generally prefer the way a dual shock feels. So I think something combining the general form factor, I guess, of a dual shock with some more Xboxian curves to it seems interesting. It looks really nice. I feel like the co- color variations are going to be a big thing. I wish the buttons had their colors on them. Yeah. That it, that's re- it really bothers me. I kind of wish they... They, yeah, the face buttons don't you. have their iconic uh, blue, green, pink, and red. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't have that. But you know, the other parts seem good. Like the touchpad feels more natural with the actual controller now, and uh, the the difference in the light bar looks looks nice, which I used a lot in Resident Evil Three because you look down and see what your health is at. Yes, it is very helpful. I was like, all right, did that put me in yellow? All right, we're good. Let's go. (laughs) The interesting thing is it's no longer a light bar. If you look at the section with the USB part, there's no bar Mm -hmm. there anymore. It's just lights that go underneath the touchpad in what is, quite frankly, a very cool look. (laughs) Do you you think that's going to be like a problem for like PSVR? Uh, I assume because they are supporting back compat and uh, we already see patents. The PSVR, as it is now, it will be backwards compatible with the DualShock 4 or the Move controllers. The VR solution for the PS5 will be using these hand controllers we've already seen uh, patents come out of. Mm. Which makes sense, because Mm -hmm. that is the direction that's going. Um, Okay, so they're just going to stop, like, trying to make sure that the new PlayStation controller is something that's VR-friendly. They'll just make their own separate... Yes. yes, which makes okay. sense for a couple reasons. Because um, I know the light bar on the back, that strip, was yeah. was something to help the PSVR read the controller. Yeah, it, it, it the PlayStation camera would read the position of that and be able to do cool things with it, which is neat because even before the VR came out, uh, Playroom on the PS4 uh, took that into account, and you could do a lot of cool things with it at launch. Um, they're dropping that entirely, which is great because one of the most common complaints I've heard about the DualShock 4 is that really bright light on the back that you can see in the reflection in your TV or lights up your Mm. entire room. Uh, I've heard a lot of people complain about that. Uh, We're going to go to Feel now. Feel, what's your opinion on this? Uh, It looks cool. I hope there is a black one because I don't want to see my fingerprints all over this. Uh, Yeah. I also miss the colors. Yeah, the face button colors definitely should come back. I think they might change it before launch. That wouldn't be uh, unprecedented. I, I enjoy how the shoulders are just enormous now. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like they took the uh, space between the R1 and the R2, got rid of the separator, and just made the R1 you know, sort of fade away in between the two of them, so they made them even bigger and chungus, or... It's pretty nice. Yeah, I'm picking up a, my I'm picking up my DualShock 4 and going, yeah, yeah, I see that. They just ripped that middle part out. Um, something I like about it is that the top part, because one of the iconic design things of the DualShock is that it had circles around the D-pad, the sticks, and the buttons, uh, but that meant mm. next to the D-pad and next to the buttons where you had the share button and the options button, there was a recess on the DualShock 4. That's no longer there. So it's going to be easier to hit the contra- uh, the create button and the options button on this than it w- is on the DualShock 4. And I appreciate that because it is literally the same height. It is the part of the same f- face. It is all one shape. It is all one cohesive shape across the controller. So it's not recessed. I appreciate that. Um, also, they are slightly angled as to be tilted, so that way your thumbs will more naturally hit a larger area of it. Because if your thumb is coming in from the lower left or the lower right, angling the button so that way it's parallel to that or perpendicular to that makes sense. There are a lot of small, nice design decisions in this I appreciate. Uh, Bob, what's your quick opinions? Um, I'm a little worried that's not going to be as comfortable to hold as the, the DualShock 4. I have smaller hands and Never like the uh, the larger style to the sides of it, but I, I'm 
I'm still excited. I hope that it does feel good. I they they've probably tested it a lot and they said that it feels smaller than it looks. So I'm I'm hopeful. But yeah, the, the colors being gone's not great. <laughs> uh but yeah, it's still exciting because it's it's new. It looks really different. It's interesting. Mm-hmm. It's even got that new texture, which is debatably b- different, and the only way we can prove how different it is is either A, waiting till it comes out and taking a high-res photo, or B, uh, taking a 6K photo of this DualShock 4 over here and, and, then, and then comparing them in Photoshop and then being like, I've debunked you, Mr. Feel. It is the same texture, uh, <laughs> but it, it doesn't look like it is. So, uh, Things I appreciate, aside from the things I already mentioned, uh, USB-C has a very prominent and middle of the controller placement. I don't oh, like how... Oh, God. Yeah, the yeah. light bar was <laughs> such a good sacrifice. Yeah, yeah, no. The light bar being gone is all around positive, in my opinion. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, I like the idea of it li- of lighting up. I like afterglow controllers, but I wasn't going to see the bar part. Mm-hmm. Putting it on top makes sense. Yeah, so abandoning that tracking the controller with your camera featured for that, worth it. 110%. I, I appreciate the centered USB-C. I'm excited to try out these adaptive triggers and the haptic feedback. I think the design is a nice refinement over the DualShock 4. Um, I think fully abandoning the circles is really good because it now has a much sleeker look as it's one cohesive shape. Um at the same time, though, I don't think it's... I think it's a different thing from the DualShock 4, but not necessarily closer to the Xbox One. Because I see... I, I've seen some people who are like, Sony's just ripping off the Xbox One controller. And I'm like, as someone who owns that controller, it it really isn't that similar. Nintendo shape. sweats. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's... And I overall, I think this controller is going to be great. I think we're going to try it and we're going to be like, man, this is so much better than a DualShock 4. I'm buying it as soon as they allow me to buy it. As soon as Target just happens to have them a week before the system comes out. Actually, it was two weeks last time, wasn't it? It was like two or three weeks. I don't remember. We bought it. I remember that. I'm sure there's some fucking quick play we can go watch where we mention it. Uh... Yeah, knowing how it worked last time where you could use the PS4 controller on the PS3 and the PS3 on the PS4, it is entirely possible we can use this thing on the PS4. At very least in a wired mode. So, you bet your ass I'm buying it early. <laughs> it, yeah. It looks... I, I, I want it just so I want it just to play PS4 games now. Yeah. Heck, just this thing is a PC controller. Yeah. Probably work. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I also appreciate the D-pad having that nice transparent plastic that the Vita does. Uh, it's a nice look. I hope the D-pad is the Vita D-pad, but I I don't want to dream so bravely. Close your heart. Yeah, no, I can't. Yeah, close your heart to it. I can't believe that in 2020 we might have a fucking console with a viable user base that's large and mainstream that gets to have a cool clicky micro switch d-pad like it's a fucking neo geo pocket color (laughs) that's too exciting i'm very happy that the touchpad has remained because of course they had two for like the backwards compatibility for ps4 but um yeah you don't want kills on shadow games like lose its use of it exactly you need it for your kills on shadow (laughs) fall also Final Fantasy 14, which I play on PS4, that simul- simulates the mouse. Oh. You can actually just, you can rub your finger around it and a cursor pops up, and that's actually very useful. Oh, that is, that is super cool. Um, mm-hmm. I like that the touchpad's bigger. It actually takes up more space in a way than the, uh, yeah, than the dual shot. like it's one. not tacked on. Yes. Because the normally it's just like, a, it's just a, a rectangle, but here it's like, it's like they molded it. Like it feels like it's a part of the controller's design. Yeah. Like Watch the edges not have for. any touch of sens- sensitivity. Like it just can't detect it outside of the square. <laughs> Bob, that's, not, that's not touch sensitivity. That's sensitivity at all. That <laughs> can't read it for the corner. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking insane. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, because they brought in the top of the touchpad, uh, it's bringing those buttons, you know, the create create button and the options button closer to the uh, closer to the buttons than they are on this controller. So I think I think 
I think I'm okay keeping the touchpad. I hope Sony makes better libraries so that way uh, devs can use that more easily because I feel like this gen, very few people took advantage of that. And I think part of that is on Sony to not, maybe they didn't make good enough libraries. Maybe, I mean, the OS doesn't use the touchpad at all. And I think that's bad. I think the uh, the video editing that you do with the share button should probably use pinch and zoom and all sorts of other things to make it quick. I mean, the touchpad literally just felt like a button in almost, almost every game like that that's what was used almost every time i think that's fair i like it whenever someone uses it as their menu see it's like you I can do- open up the main menu by just hitting this big pad doesn't matter which of the two buttons on it i mean that's i mean i think that's cool because it's a it's a very accessible button compared to the options yeah. button i think they're cowards for never like, never with a roller ball the center of the controller excuse otherwise. me bob <laughs> you want them to add a roller ball to the top of every <laughs> the roller ball should have been there instead of the touchpad clearly the marble the madness better. is coming back exactly we yeah. would never we would never stop making that joke <laughs> ever uh as for features that they announced with this, there's a built-in mic, um, which we didn't know about before now, I don't think. Uh, I think it was rumored, which is why I brought up my, their 3D audio is going to let you tune the audio with the mic in your controller. Um, there is uh, and no the, headphone jack. Actually, no, there, there is. is. There is. They confirmed later. The product manager for uh. PlayStation confirmed it later. Uh, ah, you just okay. can't see it in any of these fucking photos. Yeah, I wish that they gave us more angles on this thing. I wanted they gave to know. Us, they I, I, gave I us every angle I but the one. I looked at all of them like, I don't see one. <laughs> yeah, they gave us every angle but the one you need to see the headphone jack. Because what you can see right now... In like 6K! <laughs> yeah, it's hilarious. Um, But yeah, they also introduced the create button. Uh, Let me tell you about the create button Uh, in their the own share words. share button. Xbox wins again. I, I, I think I summarized it in my tweet of Sony introduces a share button. Microsoft goes, what? Three years later, Nintendo adds that share button. Actually, it was four years later, wasn't it? Yeah, four years later. Then three years after that, Microsoft's like, there, we have a share button. And Mic- and Sony's like, we have a create button. And Microsoft's like, what? Hold on, hold on. I read your tweet, and it felt like you maybe... In my mind, I thought you were addressing what Nintendo did... And then rolling it back a year to say what Xbox did. Are you trying to tell me that it took Xbox seven years to add a share button? Yes. Yes. There's They're a doomed. there's a re- <laughs> <laughs> No, it was okay, KZ. You doomed, could dude. you could open up your your side menu, hit the screenshot button, go back to the game, or go back to the other menu that lets you post that screenshot. It yeah. was very intuitive. As someone who's played Bob. multiple games on my Xbox One X, I can tell you I only did that once. It, it it's not a good experience. It is clumsy. They made they made a controller called the Xbox Elite controller. Uh huh. Yeah. That came out like they came out like what three years ago. Uh huh. Like it's the it's the absurdly expensive big dick controller yes and you're telling me that it did not have a share button on it no no if that you want the pros, share button not for creators pros yeah if you want the share button we have a console for you it's called the xbox series x <sighs> not even the elite series 2 controller has it <laughs> not even w- the elite series it, 2 has it i'm done i'm just done dude <laughs> and they, this is the I'm optimistic at how they're doomed. I This is why I constantly am just befuddled that people can't see that Microsoft doesn't have their shit together as much as the other two guys. Because even Nintendo got a picture button and a video button functional within the first two months of their console. And what's funny is, like, Nintendo's is hyper limited, but at least it's fast. You just hold that button and boom, it's just, it's chopping up the last 30 seconds. Yeah. And yeah, it is it is limited. But the thing is, Microsoft's console has this functionality built in. They even re-engineered their controller a couple years into this gen. Yeah, that's when they really they did. It, added it, it that. didn't have it didn't have USB C originally. It had USB. Uh, the new ones still the the new ones still don't have USB C. Um, the current Xbox One controller does not have USB C. Yeah, but you can put batteries in it. Uh, the thing they re-engineered is the RB and LB were engineered wrong, so you couldn't push them on the inner side of it uh, as easily because oh. they put a hinge there. Yeah, it was really bad. They they were the only people in the history of gaming to design L1 and R1 co- incorrectly. 
And then they also added in the 3.5 oh. inch jack because so many people were upset oh, about yeah. not being See, that. See, that was something, and I, I want you to repeat that, Bob, to make sure that, that the audience could hear it over them freaking out over that knowledge. I didn't even fucking know that, Bob. Yeah, they added a 3.5 inch jack to the bottom during that redesign because before all they had is their like custom custom proprietary port for headphones yeah. on the bottom of their controller. And uh, a lot of people complained. Yeah, because the 360 had uh, a headphone jack at the bottom of it, or a headset jack. Uh, at are the you bottom. trying? To, you trying to tell me Xbox One uh, came out at launch bad? <laughs> yeah, it was a little rough. I don't know. <laughs> and, and, and had a, and had a lot of things that they had to go back and fix later. <laughs> and a lot of things that were regressive compared to the 360. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna tell you that. Uh, what what like their dashboard? <laughs> like their everything. Man, it's it's great that the Series X doesn't have a optical out right <laughs> that was the fucking craziest shit because they're I'm turning to stone they're <laughs> oh like my God. they're like uh, phil spencer thank you for coming on our show where did the optical port go and he basically went you know everything costs money so we consider everything to be cut from the console this is i honestly believe microsoft planned to sell this thing at an xbox one x price of 500 or 600 and is now scared shitless that sony's going to come out with the ps5 at 400 which will lose Sony money, but Microsoft can't cut that much, so they cut the optical port. Because the dev kits for the Xbox Series X have the optical port. I'm looking at these ludicrously high res shots more. Mm -hmm. It looks like the bottom or the back of this controller has a uh, sort of like a, a texture to it, kind of like I see on some of the high end uh, on other brand controllers, like scuff controllers and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. It's using that type of plastic. I mean, I think the uh, I think the face plate has the same texture as the back plate. Unless you're talking, no, wait, it's a you're little different. You're talking about sorry. When you said the back of the controller, I thought you meant the port area, no, not no. the the grip, the underside. Yeah, the grip area. Yeah, that is a different texture. I mean, even the PS4 is that. No, that that's got a different different kind of texture. Than <laughs> this is a third kind of texture. Oh. Yeah. I mean, both textures are different on the on the dual set. So, Bob, are you telling me these are, in fact, four different textures? <laughs> it, wait. Well, is this, this is a John Carmack thing. Is this mega textures? <laughs> <laughs> the front of the controller for the new one's a different, or one texture, and the back is another. Correct. Um, and then the back of the PS4 controller has a different texture than the front of the PS4 controller, but this is also different from that is. Yes, but the front is also different from how the front of this is. So we're talking yes. four textures. Yes, totally different new textures. This might be mega texture. This might be a totally new controller. I know. Shocking. Shocking. No one would do that, right? You never get new controllers with new systems, right, guys? <laughs> the theme of Sony is what you want. <laughs> I, as as I said, I think it's absolute hubris and absolute lack of creativity to say that microsoft had uh, hit the peak of ergonomics and console controller design i think it's insane that people are okay with them rolling out the same controller changed absolutely slightly and with a share button that is not exciting in the least they announced this dual sense controller people are on fire with how exciting this is you know, yeah I, it just appeared on twitter and i went whoa and this was the moment where i'm like next gen's coming yeah there's things i've never seen before and that's that's the exciting thing also i'm really excited and for sony to announce that their gamers don't share their gamers create <laughs> they used the word epic in their press release about it you know what's really really exciting about this controller though what is you could see it being the controller for the orb ps9 from the ps2 commercial yes, you, could. you could yeah oh man that's pretty fucking dope but yeah great controller design i appreciate them changing the name uh to dual sense because you know that's also exciting it's it's nice to be like it wasn't alongside the announcement of we're cutting a feature so it can't be called that anymore yeah. what are you talking about <laughs> you referencing the six axis yes. you know we don't talk about the six axis <laughs> Man, that Ruh -ruh. sucked. Anyway, it. Bob, let's talk about what we learned from inside Xbox on the same day this controller was announced. Uh, let me hold up. Let's see. Uh, I would like to point out no one on Twitter was talking about inside Xbox, so we had to go and watch the whole thing to be sure that, you know, something wasn't stealth announced and no one cared. Uh, we learned about the inside of different execs' houses. 
and how bad their microphone and video quality were. I mean, the funniest part is the person with the worst video quality was the lady who worked at Microsoft and had a headset on. <laughs> She's wearing her, like, Astro she, Gamer headset. Yeah, she <laughs> it was... sounds terrible. It sounded the worst somehow. Yes. That blew my mind. It was, like, clipping constantly. It was really strange. Really strange. Anyways, Bob, let's talk about this. Uh, Gears Tactics mm-hmm. uh, got a release date for PC. <laughs> comes out to Mar- It comes April out in three weeks. April 28th. On PC only. What? PC oh, only. Uh, coming to Xbox later this year. Um, yep. That Gear Attack game might be okay. I don't know. So what we're hearing about real quick is a Gears game that is coming to Steam before it's coming to Xbox. Yes. Exciting. We live in a weird, weird world. Uh, and Hotline I, Miami I'm, Collection. Oh, oh, oh what, sorry. Do you have, yeah, uh, feel? Feel, feel out of thing. Uh, I'm really starting to believe that they're just going to be like two years into the Series X. It's over. Buy a PC. That's where we live now. No, it's got to be Agro's rabble. They will never admit that it's over. <laughs> <laughs> we stopped releasing games on it, sure. It's but... gonna, it's gonna, it's like, imagine the energy that went into no longer making a Game Boy, but with that. So, like, you know, they're like, well, you know, the DS is our third pillar. Like, imagine Microsoft <laughs> is like, well, the PC is our second pillar, and then they just stop it, talking about <laughs> Xbox one day. <laughs> you must, in fact, it's the center pillar. It's holding up the house now. Also, we're removing the first pillar. <laughs> <laughs> I, we don't need to. It crusted over and crumbled. Uh, there was also an interview, a uh, really good interview by uh, Ryan McCaffrey. I believe it was uh, Unlocked is an Xbox podcast he does. He did an interview with Phil Spencer. Uh, for IGN, uh, wherein Phil Spencer, let's see, what what was what he said? It was really frustrating whenever Microsoft announces a new IP and people ask if it's going to be on the Switch. <laughs> oh. This strategy is working out horribly, and I don't understand why they thought it wouldn't. They're for the gamers. <sighs> yes. So they should just go fully multi-platform because Bleeding Edge doesn't screen to me a game that's hyper-optimized for the Xbox when it drops down to 20 frames per second. Yeah. Clearly, don't, patched, don't worry. Clearly, just Bleeding wait. Edge's home is on PC where it has a peak player count of 424. Oh, man, it went up. Oh, did it? I thought I thought that was the peak. No, that was like 290 or something, wasn't it? I thought it? 290 was the peak over the last day. The okay. peak ever was like 424 <laughs> or 428. Oh, man. Anyway, it's not going to reach that again. So we're getting Hotline Miami collection for the Xbox One. It's the first time Hotline Miami has ever been released on the Xbox. I'm going to say that again. It's 2020 and the Xbox is finally getting Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep Hot and Hotline Miami. And some of those Yakuza games. And Yakuza again. games. <laughs> Jesus. Comes to Game Pass. <laughs> oh, Game Pass. Okay. Okay. Now... This Game Pass is the only time you would buy those Kingdom Hearts collections because one, having talked to people who played them, the ports are worse. Yeah, they have like cutscenes that stutter. <laughs> uh, the frame rate is weird at points, and even even more hilariously, in some moments, like the final boss of Kingdom Hearts two, there's a sequence where you change your played the character you're playing as for a cool segment. They forgot to change the button. Yep, so it asked no, it you. Shows, it shows PlayStation buttons. In it. <laughs> and somehow that passed. Yeah, somehow that it, passed. They must just expect nobody to play those versions. Because I feel if also, you like Japanese you, games, you don't have an Xbox One. Feel? Do you want to do you want to play Kingdom Hearts 2.8? It's got Dream Drop Distance, 0.2 and back cover. Pick it up on Xbox for $60. Oh, these things are all, if they're not full price, they were like 10% off full price where someone's like, it costs like over $100 to get both of these collections. Meanwhile, on PS4 right now, you can get the whole series for $30. Which is insane. <laughs> Good fucking God. Uh, but yeah, as for if you like Japanese games, you own a PlayStation. I was shocked when I found out at the Final Fantasy 13 launch, maybe that's not the case. Yeah, it, it's super it's surprising how many people who love things like Kingdom Hearts and other Japanese games, but just only have an Xbox. 
It's bizarre. It's weird. That it's was like, more it, true for the 360. I feel like yeah, it's still but going. It's still, it's still going. Gym. You can ask Bob in his 13 years of game store experience. Oh, that's true. <laughs> they, it's, it's just all, I, it's I bought a console that has nothing I want. When will they port the things I want to it? It's like a person trying to refill their soda cup from a fucking food court while they're standing in the arcade. Uh, like where's the fucking where's the soda fountain <laughs> i'm thirsty oh yeah it's like i they grew up on 360 so they're like oh well i have to keep doing it xbox i'm an xbox gamer it's like got i got all my friends have an xbox yeah you're not getting those games so once again about how cross-platform helps sony out but doesn't help microsoft out the people who are pushing it because I've known many people who literally went back to Xbox just because their friends were on it. Because they had friends that would not change platforms. Meanwhile, Sony's like, oh no, not cross-platform, anything but that. I'm like, dude, you guys, you guys make out like bandits if that happens. <laughs> anyway, we should move on. Bob, Resident Evil, Resident Evil Village. Yes, there's a rumor going around about Resident Evil 8 Village. Resident Evil Village. Yeah, because the 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 V the village spells out eight in Roman numerals. Yeah, it's like it's a sequel to seven, you yeah. know, where it used Roman numerals. Because the I is uppercase and the L's are uppercase, but we ignore the bottom of the L's and then we highlight the parts we want in red and ask you to ignore the rest. And yeah, that's an eight. <laughs> that's it's better you know. than a giraffe getting a blowjob like six was. A, a lot, a lot God. of sources are coming out for this, and it's there are a lot of a lot of sources are going. Yeah, this is real, and multiple people going. This is the build I played, and it sounds like yeah, this is happening. Where some, some people are like, this character looks like this. Other people go, no, he was completely redesigned for our build. Yeah, because like Chris looked one way in one build, and a completely different in another. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing there's just flashbacks or something, something that gives a reason they would have such drastically different Chris's. Uh, but, yeah. Maybe maybe they're like we used RE seven Chris in the first one. Then we decided he should look like Chris. I mean, there's yeah, that's there's a, probably it. Ah, uh, yeah, that's probably that, it. Maybe they maybe they just didn't finish the model, and some people did an earlier test build, so it ended up looking different. Well, you know, there's that but, new uh, enemy type of witch. Maybe she cast a spell on Chris. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not jacked anymore. I can't punch the boulder. <laughs> because it goes. <laughs> Becomes the virgin was the chat. I <laughs> continue my bloodline, witch. Where everyone's saying like something really shocking happens with Chris. I'm like, did they just kill him in the opening of this game? I mean, that'd be that'd be pretty fucking. There, stop asking they for Chris. Taking influences from Resident Evil 3.5, which is cool. Like, yeah, which I think is really interesting. Which, for people who don't know, that's just an early version of 4 that we saw at show, trade shows and stuff, not an actual game at all. Yeah. Uh, so Kind of like, like Resident Evil 1.5 was that early version of Resident Evil 2 that they completely made and then scrapped because it wasn't good enough. Yeah. Uh, but it seems that your main character is suffering from hallucinations that are probably virus-based. Mm -hmm. uh, they're werewolf monsters. Which is cool as hell. Thank you. Yeah, no, that, that'll be really interesting. Maybe we'll have some wolf doors. Uh, the uh, witches in this game. <laughs> I hear that. <laughs> you, <laughs> you apparently shoot her and she turns into blugs and crawls away. Maybe you'll dig through the ditches in this game. We don't even know. You might even burn some witches. Uh, it's set in Europe. And a snowy village. It's set in Europe. It, it, it's also set to Power Man 5000. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And the, Worlds are about to collide. And there's apparently conflicting stories about how the inventory works. Some say it works like the... The, the Resident one, Evil 4 t -t -t uh, Tetris thing. Yeah, it's 4 Tetris thing. Others say it works like the newer Resident Evil uh, remakes and such. Yeah. So... It takes place in Europe. Uh-huh. There is presumably a village. Uh-huh. Since uh, it, it's called Village. Mm -hmm. uh, and it has the RE4 menu, uh, inventory, maybe. They're remaking RE4. Yes, and I'm I'm fine with it taking heavy inspiration from 4. Um, and apparently Ethan. No, I mean they're have... also remaking RE4 in addition to this using assets. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think it'd be a little suspect if it was like, why does this village look exactly like the one from 8? <laughs> but, but hey, it's fine. It feels different because Resident Evil 8 is supposed to be first person from what I was reading. Yeah, it's, it's another first person one. It's, it's a snowy village. 
So it's not going to be like 4. It'll, it'll, it's probably heavily inspired theme-wise by 4 and early four versions of 4, but mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to be visually or gameplay much like 4. Uh, but the thing about I don't Ethan, know, you powerbomb a fucking tyrant in that <laughs> RE7 DLC. Right. Well, we'll see what, like, like I was trying to get to, Ethan. Yeah. He's back and apparently has a sort of Evil Dead take on him. Like, he's almost like Ash. Good. <laughs> So I'm, <laughs> I'm curious to see how that goes. I'm so excited for every Capcom game to have sassy Dante as a main character. I saw this, this really funny good. take on Twitter that like, no, they can't lean into the crazy Swamp Grandpa DLC. RE7 was good because of how down to earth it was. And I said, in the first two hours, you have a chainsaw sword fight against an insane man in a death pit. Yeah, yeah. The, don't you get like your arm chopped off but then you like pour medicine on you uh, that's an good. optional scene you don't have to get it but it's uh, really good yeah and it's happened. really good and your guy heals himself like that and then goes what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> so yeah you bet your ass the guy who got his arm chopped off in the first game becomes ash yeah no there's also a, a lot of obvious evil dead references even yes. in that game yes there so. are a lot so this isn't surprising at all that he's gonna be like groovy <laughs> at least that's finish personality that they kind of had to give him one if he was going to continue being the protagonist no see here's where you're wrong feel that is exactly how he's like Ash from Evil Dead because in the first one he has no personality and then in the later ones he has an 11 out of 10 personality <laughs> it's really good uh, this is exciting as hell, but yeah, allegedly shipping in Q1 2021, uh, there were rumors that this thing hasn't been shown off because of some deals with Sony, which kind of makes oh, sense. Of course, because every time. Every time, Sony's the one. You, they know. You see, this is going to happen. The, PS, the PS5 reveal event where they show Resident Evil 8, and then they show Final Fantasy 16, and they show NAC 3. It's going to be great. Yeah, And then honestly, they show the new the, Tony Hawk game, which is also exclusive to the PS5, I and will, then they show them dropping one of those uh, Tunston spikes from space onto <laughs> Phil Spencer's house. <laughs> <laughs> no, my house! <laughs> That's where I do my conferences from! Um... No, you didn't break the closet. It has my gamer shirts in there. I, uh, I, I was... That's, I do think they'll be like, Resident Evil 8 is played best on the PlayStation 5, and they're, the trailer's gonna be PS5 version. Yeah, it, what if it's exclusive? I don't think it'll be they exclusive made, to the PS5, but it might be exclusive to PlayStation. Yeah. <laughs> they made certain optimizations to work with the PS5's SSD. <laughs> Oh, could you imagine? And then it comes to the Xbox Series X and it's like, man, these doors take a while to open. Ethan suddenly becomes really bad at unlocking doors. Oh my god. Like, <laughs> Capcom's insane. Like, if this actually comes out 2021 Q1, that'll be three years in a row they've released a stellar... Wait, four years in a row? No, no, it's just three. Man. They've released a stellar Resident Evil game. You think it's fucking crazy now, Bob? They're gonna... It's just even outside of Resident Evil. You know, we had Devil May Cry 5 that year and Monster Hunter World around then. They're gonna announce Monster Hunter World 2. And you're just gonna fucking ascend. You're gonna be like, good Capcom is back. I'm dead. <gasps> yeah, I have to wonder if they would just keep doing expansions for that or actually do a sequel. I have, I have no idea where they would go with I assume Monster Hunter. they're doing sequel, expansion, sequel, expansion rather slowly, but yeah, we'll see. Yeah, um, uh, Monster Hunter World um, with the Iceborne thing is basically adding what a Monster Hunter World uh, Monster Hunter game would have G rank, which is like the highest tiered hunts. So every Monster Hunter game would have like an updated version that would have that. And Iceborne is basically that. So the next thing would definitely be a new game. Which is exciting. Yeah. You get to remake it from the ground up. You know, fix things. Oh. Oh, that's, that'd be great. So we, we, gotta, we gotta keep going, though. Uh, uh, right. KZ, let's talk about this amazing idea IGN has. Okay. So there's two quick ones that uh, we can knock out. The first one, of course, IGN. Uh, in the absence of E3, has announced they'll be doing an event called the Summer of Gaming. What a It'll good name! Be a digi yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> it is a digital event. They'll be collaborating with a number of partners, including 2K, Square Enix, Sega, Bamco, 
Amazon Stadia, Twitter, <laughs> Devolver Digital, THQ Nordic, and more. With more details coming in the coming weeks, it will include live broadcasts uh, and editorial coverage from their people, but they also specifically say like publisher presentations from them. I noticed from, Amazon from, like, the publisher. was on that list. Yes. So it gets announced this year, huh? Oh, they Amazon delayed their MMO, by the way. Yeah, they did just do that. <sighs> so it'll be maybe it might end up being like we're pulling out because everything is delayed. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Also, uh, but, uh, speaking of Stadia, real quick aside, uh, you can get Stadia for free now for two months if you have a Gmail account. So try it out and then cut out your eyes. Uh, here's the best part. Right. It's Stadia Pro, uh, but they're limiting it to 1080p. <laughs> so, so 480. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> this is a this is a great you know filler thing because we don't have E3 coming uh, this year, but the ESA announced they will be coming back next year. Yes, uh, this is a great filler thing. You know, this uh, IGN presents the Dark Tournament. Uh, very exciting. I'm looking forward to. What the are you talking about? That's uh, that's canon material. Some of the best. I'm looking forward to uh, ESA returns with Sensui arc. <laughs> Every EA play is like watching Chapter Black. Yeah, I was gonna say Bethesda. I was gonna say Bethesda. <laughs> I, I don't know. EA's conferences have been known to kill the mood at my E3 parties more than any yes. other. One, it, one can be Chapter Black and one can be Garlic Jr. I, uh, it, look, they, oh, the Blackwater oh, Black Mist is released into the audience. They start cheering. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Man, this mystery takes a while to get to the bottom of. Uh, I need to know what this news is about. Feel, read this bullet, the one I'm highlighting. Legends <laughs> of Runeterra, the uh, League of Legends equivalent to Hearthstone, uh, was in open beta, but it launches for real on April 30th. Oh, cool. Might give it a chance. I don't know. It's okay. I like it more than Hearthstone. Okay. Well, that's stop good. Call, stop calling it Hearthstone. He's never going to stop. You ain't nothing going to break his stride. I know. Uh, let's get this week in Randy Pitchford out of the way. Our favorite. No. I don't even know what it's about. Me, so, me? uh, I'll keep this, like I said, three sentences. Okay. Okay. Borderlands 3 announces a new thing inside the game where you play a bad mini game and it does science for, like, folding to, at home. This is clearly only being announced now because that news article came out that revealed Randy Pitchford is a piece of shit. Fuck Randy Pitchford. That was three sentences. This one doesn't count. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mr. Feel. KZ, let's talk about the biggest news that isn't controller related of the last week. The best thing about uh, us is that we break the news immediately. <laughs> we break the news so before you... it's broken. <laughs> <laughs> so, you see, here's how it works. We read a press release uh, about a Cooking Mama game in August that's going to come out that's going to utilize the power of cr of the blockchain, and then everyone catches up to that, and it feels really weird seeing that happen. Yeah. So we have the curious case of Cooking Mama Cookstar. It continues. Interviews came out with some developers on it, uh, revealing that all of the crypto and blockchain stuff that was mentioned in its announcement were quote unquote buzzwords used by the publisher to trick people into investing in them. Hmm. I feel like I heard something about that on a podcast around when this was first announced <laughs> and somebody called it exactly that. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe. Apparently, the, they said the publisher, the people at the head of the publisher have no idea what any of those words mean. This is why they're using them. Uh, Smart. The publisher was like partnering up with the IP holders for Cooking Mama uh, and released the game early without consulting the IP owners uh, who then used their contacts at Nintendo to get the game immediately pulled. Uh, the devs wanted the game delayed for further polish or just to outright cancel it. So, um, hmm. yeah, th this seemed to be a complete, complete mess. And developers went... The overheating is not from any crypto things. It's this is our first game we're actually making and we're using Unity. <laughs> Man, what a fucking one-two punch. 
your incompetence perfectly set up with your scam. Yep. 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 And that that is the that is the full brunt of what we know about the most mysterious game of all time. It's really strange and <laughs> strange and ironic. <laughs> strange and ironic, isn't it? <laughs> the, yeah, it's, it's, He's a devil may cry so one line. <laughs> Oh, my <laughs> Bob started losing. It. I was like, "No, oh. I can't do this." <laughs> um, <laughs> what's strange and ironic, Bob? That they would like <laughs> the Cooking Mom is a respected series. It is, yeah. I don't think anyone's like, "Oh, that's a scam." Th and then this happens. Like every level of this is insanity. Mm -hmm. Like, I why do like, they have oh, a new neat, publisher? They're making why, a new one? Why? why do you, any of this? What do you mean, blockchain? What's going on? <laughs> <sighs> yeah, no. If if you go back and listen to that podcast, I explain what you could use the blockchain for and how none of it makes sense for this. Also, apparently, vegan mode is the only mode that works in this game, which is fucking yeah, nuts. I was gonna say that. That's they're a like, we added a new vegetarian mode. It's the only mode. Maybe that's why the publisher shouldn't have released it. I mean, that definitely is a reason why, because I was even vaguely interested in this game, and then they go, yeah, that side mode, that's the only mode. It, there is no content. Die. I saw a video of Cooking Mama doing a Fortnite dance. I'm not sure if that was real. I think it is. I think that's in the game. Uh, did it Did it play the Dance Till You're Dead song? I don't remember. <laughs> okay. Well, that, that would have been a hallmark uh, sign of not being real. <laughs> I saw fan art of her. I saw fan art of her being taken away by the cops. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Shout out to Go Nintendo, who is inexplicably promoting the fact you can purchase the game from the game's official site without mentioning mentioning anything we just talked about. Cool. Um, the game That's allegedly that. does have Office. Mm. What is it? Office Create, which is the name of the IP holder now, because they yeah. were called like Cooking Mama Incorporated for a bit, and then they changed their name back to Office Create. Um. Yeah, this whole thing's super weird, and that game looks bad on top of it, so... I would say just avoid it based on the game looking really bad. I mean, you have to go out of your way just to get it. Right? But that's not true. You can go to Walmart.com and order it, and then they will ship it to their store, and then you can pick it up. That's a lot Man. of steps. Imagine being the person who gets infected picking up Cooking Mama Cookstar. Then your switch overheats. <laughs> Just like you do. And we're, we're, we're clear. Yeah, we're clear. Me and Bob gotta go buy and eat 10 candy bars so we can get all of the Final Fantasy 7 goods like Vidgar Bangle, Shinra Bangle, Corneo's Armlet, Superstar Belt, and Mako Crystal. Mako Crystal? Yeah, the Mako Crystal is the thing you get with 10 whole candy bars. 10 candy bars? You thought I was kidding? You think this is a fucking <laughs> joke? This is, this is real life. I hope I like Butterfinger as much as I remember. Eats. Dan eats 10 Butterfingers. No! <laughs> it says it's yes. an improved recipe, Dan, just like the new improved uh, Golden Corral. I guarantee that Golden Corral is more new and more unimproved. <laughs> no. Every 30 minutes, Dan eats a Butterfinger. No! <laughs> They would have to pay me so much. God, Butterfingers yeah. are gross. Two dollars for the Butterfinger. No, a lot more than that. I, I like how we've reached the point where Dan's like, you're going to have to pay me to eat ch a chocolate bar. Butterfingers are disgusting. They get stuck in your teeth, and I already have teeth problems. So it's literally the worst case scenario. It's not food. It's incredibly sugary. It feels nasty on my teeth, and it doesn't even taste good. It is one of the worst candy bars. But Bob will find... You don't... Throw me that can Throw me the Butterfinger. We're doing it live. Okay. Throw me a Butterfinger. Okay. <laughs> Hell yeah. Here we All go. Right. I guess I gotta eat one too. Bob's also gotta eat one. Because we bought two already. This is for you, Tifa. This is for <laughs> Tifa, this is for you. <laughs> I need that theme. Tifa, why are you making me we eat this? The chocolate was made from her milkies. <laughs> Man, oh. That's terrible. Why are you guys right up? Yeah, don't say that while he's eating. Get, let, let either say it before or after. I I wanted it to do the most damage. Yeah, this is not great. That's all right. 
It's not great. They get stuck in your teeth, but they're interesting. It doesn't quite like a Butterfinger. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, I, I, I enjoy Butterfingers and always remember how the moment their partnership with The Simpsons ended, The Simpsons immediately started hitting them. <laughs> yeah, there must have been some really shitty shenanigans behind closed doors, I'm sure. What a shitty fucking candy bar. It does leave you, oh like, God. really dry. Like, yeah. Immediately just dries out your whole mouth. Mm-hmm. I'm experiencing Ooh. that right now. Oh, I can feel it on my teeth while you talk about it. Yeah, it's not great. Raw. It's really not great. So, KG, what do you have coming up in the next week? Hashtag ag, hashtag sponsored. Uh, yeah, uh, some hashtag ad, hashtag sponsor Final Fantasy VII Remake. Thank you, Square Enix, for providing free copy of the game. I'll be uh, streaming it, and uh, then the parts of it will come out on YouTube in, in edited form. I somehow m edited at least two of those from the stream before we started today. So that'll be coming out. Uh, Cold Steel is still going on. Uh, that that game bounces between like an 8 out of 10 to a 5 out of 10, so we'll see how that keeps uh, keeps oscillating. And uh, yeah, I'll try to stream other stuff if I have time. We'll see. <laughs> when you said Cold Steel, I was thinking Red Steel. I'll wait for your stream. <laughs> God, this candy bar sucks. I got through the whole thing, though. Anyway, so, uh, <laughs> we're going to be doing Ape Escape. Ape Escape's really great. Ape Escape World's going great. Uh, Ape Escape 2 uh, supports widescreen, which is crazy for such an old game. It looks really nice. Mm -hmm. Um, Animations and stuff are incredible. We're, we live stream that, hopefully, uh, the Friday before this recording. If not, then we will announce a new date. Um, please keep an eye on twitch.tv slash gigaboost for more Ape Escape Roll. We're going to put up small videos of the uh, spinoff stuff, though. Or maybe we'll stream it. I don't know. We're playing Ape Escape Roll pretty loose since there aren't that many games in the, in the franchise. Oh, this is so fucking all over my teeth. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't even have separations in my teeth anymore. I just have whatever the fuck this is in between there. Oh yeah, I think I need to. Why would my you teeth. do this? Yeah, this is fucking awful. Um. Also, as we said before, expect a Final Fantasy VII remake spoiler cast from the Gigaboots Podcast Network at some point. I don't know when. We'll be getting that out soon. Uh, and I think that's about all I have to talk about. Hey, Mister Feel, how great do you feel having not eaten a Butterfinger just now? Uh, pretty good. I kind of want one, though. Uh, I'm not doing anything in the next week because I'm taking it off to play Final Fantasy VII Remake. That's why Smart I man. shotgunned the last 15 hours of Danganronpa 2 over the course of, like, four days on stream. Smart man. Smart man. Ugh, this is awful. I'm ending this podcast. Don't eat Butterfingers. Get much smaller Butterfingers. These, uh, these are way too big. You have to get this size or larger. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's mean. Yeah, no, they're like, get this or a Baby Ruth or a Crunch Bar. And I'm like, hey, Crunch Bar, it's Rice Krispies and chocolate. Num num. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, allegedly. It's, it's fine. It's not great. It's fine. Allegedly chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to this episode of The Big Think Dimension. If you would like to support the GB Podcast Network, head on over to patreon.com slash GB Podcast, so that way you can get exclusive behind-the-scenes on stuff, other content. There's a lot of content. It's basically non-ending avalanche of content. So head on over there, become a $5 backer or a podlord today. was brought to you by the power of the legendary Gigaboots executive producers, Vincent Pover, Nicholas Cameron, E. Lee Broyles, Star Falcon, Spaceman Spiff, Danny Richardson, Dryzart, Redblaze27, and Texas Man Joins Smash. Thank you for lending us your power, our executive producers. And also these guys. If you want to become powerful like our executive producers, then head on over to www.patreon.com slash gigaboots today. <laughs>